Hello, Money.net Live. We got Tyler Wood from the CMT. Man, you this has been a crazy morning this morning. Lots going on here. Um, everything we've been talking about lately is the amount of cash on the sidelines, uh, Tyler. And and one thing that, that everybody's been asking about. Is this the time when cash is actually coming back in the market or is it still sitting on the sidelines? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was talking with a business partner last night just about, you know, the market being down about, you know, 0.7% yesterday, a little less than a 1% move. And I said, oh, well, that's negligible because in this recent bit of vol volatility, a 1% move just doesn't, doesn't mean anything to us anymore. Right. We've, we've been conditioned to expect such high volatility. And what I would say is, uh, you know, I can't predict how many investors are bringing that cash back into the equities markets. But for those who are thinking about the opportunity, they've got their list of securities they want to buy, whether that's on a fundamental or a technical basis. I think, uh, I think we got to look at what's trending and we got to pay attention to relative strength, Stephen. Uh, okay. I think for, for a lot of investors, we're looking at absolute trends. Um, and if we think about using technical analysis as a comparative lens, we could see, uh, you know, how to fish where the fish are, if you will. Now, now, knowing you, Tyler, I know you've got charts out there, and I know you're ready to go with some RSI, some heat map. What do you got for us today? Sure thing. Let's uh, let's pull up a go no go relative strength heat map. So, in okay. addition to my role as managing director of the CMT Association, I'm also the co-founder of a tool called Go No Go Charts. And okay. what we're looking at is a really simplified view of technical indicators blended in the background, right? So it, we've been doing this uh, every week and we've talked about how you could use uh, lots of different tools to have a checklist about whether something is trending or not. So we know that if we add a ton of squiggly lines to our charts, it's gonna add analysis paralysis. We're gonna reintroduce a lot of those behavioral pitfalls that investors fall victim to. So what we're looking at on screen is every sector of the S&P 500 and we're looking at the trend conditions. So those colors, when we're in pink and purple, we're in bearish, no-go trend configuration. When we're in blue and aqua, we're in go trends, right? So a strong and weak form of an uptrend uh, in, in that uh, security. Okay. On this heat map, what we want to do now is step back from the absolute trend of each of those sectors and look at how they're performing relative to the S&P 500. So for all those investors that have got a bunch of cash on the sidelines, uh, I'm one of them. Uh, haven't had a lot of equity exposure as we've been in this risk off defensive environment. If you're looking to get involved, what you would think about is, all right, what is trending in a positive relative performance to the S&P 500? And in our top three sectors, we've got the information technology, uh, consumer discretionary and communications. Strong no-go trend relative to the S&P for all communication sector uh, we've had some strength in the consumer discretionary. It's held up pretty well through this uh, recent bout, but that's rolled over as well. So our growth equity sectors, I wouldn't touch them because they're relative underperformers of okay. the uh, S&P 500. Where we look for opportunities are in things like energy. We've all been reading the headlines. We know that uh, the energy sector was the highest performing sector of the S&P in all of 2021. It yep. continued to be the only trade that worked in the first half of 22. And we took a break, right? <laughs> energy underperformed for a minute while we got some respite on those treasury yields. And we saw some risk assets outperform from those growth sectors. Right now, energy is in a strong relative uptrend uh, to the S&P 500. Financials outperforming. We're even seeing a, a little outperformance from the industrial sector now. Okay. And uh, then on down the defensive line. So materials, uh, healthcare, and consumer staples. So who would you say to people who say, okay, well, that's great. Uh, energy's been running for a while now. Um, mm -hmm. What about the contrarian field to that? Okay, you see the growth stocks have been beaten up. Um, those tech stocks have been beaten up. And in your charts, you're showing a lot of purple. Um, yep. But why not uh, be the contrarian and buy when it's cheap? Uh, well, I'm not one to bottom fish, Stephen. All right. I, I think that when something is in a downtrend, uh, it's it's likely to stay in that downtrend. Now, long duration equities have not been uh, the favorite for a lot of investors because of this rising rate environment. Right. Okay. The the long duration or or the time to pay out from some of those uh, information technology firms just it it really just doesn't stack up for a lot of investors on a fundamental basis. And so when you look to uh, more cyclical sectors like the financials and the energy, I mean, this is, this is a daily chart, right? But if we zoom out a little bit, I mean, that looks like a pretty long-term uptrend to me. And if we even jump out to a weekly chart, 
right? The, the pitfall that a lot of investors fall into is, oh, well, I've missed it, right? It was a big run up and uh, I, I missed the trade. Well, the truth is every stock that's going to, to uh, triple is first going to go up 100%. That's about the only truth that we can identify in the, in the market. And that's very predictable. Yep. If it's yep. going to triple, first, it's going to go up 100%. So when you see the XLE on this weekly basis in this long-term uptrend, I mean, I'd be looking to get in after this period of weakness, right? Classical technical analysis, we're looking for a flag or a pennant, these bullish price uh, patterns. And now we've, we're seeing momentum come back in the direction of the trend. So this is a a traditional go no go chart we're seeing strong trend conditions on this price panel and down here in the go no go oscillator we've got a blend of momentum volume and volatility so complete technical picture without all the squiggly lines and right now when i see this uh, momentum breaking up out of a squeeze right we've had volatility compression we've had a nice tight range and we've been range bound here for several months now since the summer i mean this to me looks like a, an opportunity to buy the breakout all right. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit. Let's, um, let's look at, you know, one of the things that I have been looking at is just the beaten up in the infosec. Yeah, you got it. Thanks. The yep. XLK. Yeah. Look, uh, for me, uh, you know, look, some of these stocks have been really beaten up, though. Yeah. Uh, and, and I totally understand. Right. Uh, investors sometimes come to this game thinking about mean reversion or you're thinking about uh, yeah. investing on a valuation metric. Right. So you want to buy things that are on sale, so to speak. They've, they've been beaten up. What I see on this chart is a series of lower highs and lower lows. People got really excited about the information technology sector in that relief rally over the summer. Again, yep. we're looking at a weekly chart. So this is yep. longer term horizon. But man, right now we're just, we've made new lows. We broke through those June lows. We've got negative momentum. So enthusiastic selling of the XLK. Uh, I agree it's attractive from a valuation standpoint, but so was Enron after it was down 80%. <laughs> I love that. That's a lot good. of those fundamental, okay. a lot of fundamental analysts saying, oh my gosh, if you loved it at 80, you're going to love it at 30. And, you know, it, there's strong support at zero for certain companies. Uh, sure. I'm not that. predicting that the XLK is, is going to be, you know, decimated from here, but I would wait, right? This is just me. I would look to see a sign of, uh, of a reversal in trend. So we'd want to see positive momentum first. It's going to go oscillator up here in positive territory between zero and six. And then I'd like to see the trend conditions start to show some constructive moves. So let's, let's see some bottoming. Let's hold this. You're waiting low. on that little green dot to tell you to go. Uh, say that again. You're waiting on the little green dot to tell you go. Is that right? That's right. The, uh, the momentum coming back in the direction of the underlying trend is really uh, that's that's the way that I have been taught, and that seems to work for me as a uh, as a longer term trend follower. Let me investor. ask this question: do, do you also incorporate other things like Andrew's Pitchfork, Fibonacci sequence, things of that nature that um, are more uh, physically seen on us on a, a chart than um, pulling up RSI or uh, in this case, T-team squeezes? Yeah, yeah. So I, great question. I wouldn't add additional derivative indicators to any chart, right? The more panels we add below, okay. the less we're focused on the price, which is how we all get paid, right? Price is, right. Price is very important. But on that price panel, looking at Fibonacci extensions and retracements is very easy because you don't have a lot of clutter. So, you know, downside projections for the XLK, right? Like <laughs> we've got strong support uh, over here at, at 100, but there's a lot of black space on this chart before we get to areas of congestion uh, from, from prior um, uh, points of anchoring. Mm -hmm. And does it take does it take an account uh, like say gaps and things of that nature that also are on the charts? Absolutely. So if, uh, let's just jump into a really short term, right? If we were trying to capture a little bit of the um, that mean reversion, those high volatility moves to the upside, this is a 15 minute chart of the XLK. And if you're really excited about that, I'd look for a leading indicator down here on the, on the momentum panel, right? We break through zero on heavy volume. Uh, you could capture that in a very short-term trade and you've got pretty clear risk management to get out as, uh, as the no-go takes hold or when it breaks back below zero, when you see enthusiastic selling negative momentum. Right here in this congestion, right? We've got continued volatility squeezes. So if you're familiar with like Keltner bands or Bollinger bands, we're looking for that compression of volatility, that struggle between bulls and bears. And when it breaks, when you see a decisive break of a volatility squeeze, in this case, 
to the downside, uh, that, that tends to lead to a higher velocity move in that direction. Um, so trading gaps, I mean, I would expect, right, that, uh, that a lot of our traders out there are paying very close attention to uh, gaps being filled or causing some overhead resistance. All right. So talk to me, Tyler, how do people put these on their charts? How do they put the go, no go literally on a chart? Yep. Uh, so it's available on a ton of different platforms. Okay. Uh, trading view, stock charts, uh, meta let's stock. Do it. Let's, let's show them how to get it on trading view. Let's show them how to get it on stock charts. Yep. It, you can just head to www.gonogocharts.com. You can subscribe to uh, turn these tools on on whatever platform you choose. Um, they are uh, unique and succinct. So if you're going to Metastock, uh, you can purchase directly through Metastock or NinjaTrader or whatever platform you're used to trading on. With TradingView, we do that subscription right through our site, www.gonogocharts.com. And does, how does it handle high volume companies like say Tesla or the SPY, the Qs? Um, is it handled it quite nicely or does, is it... Uh, Okay, yeah, let's look so, at it right now. Let's do it. Tesla, look at that. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. And let me let me jump back to a daily chart. Uh, it doesn't matter what the security is, as long as it has liquidity, right? So there are some some penny stocks uh, that I wouldn't recommend because you've got uh, such um, gaps in the chart. But something like Tesla works perfectly, and it doesn't matter whether that stock is a five dollar stock or a, a fifteen hundred dollar stock. A technical tool like this is going to work the same over any time frame on any asset class, any security. If you, you want to be trading lean hog, Stephen, or you want to be trading Tesla, uh, it shouldn't matter if your technical tool is, uh, is sound. So on this chart of Tesla, I'm seeing, again, lower lows, uh, a series of lower highs and lows. We've got negative momentum on heavy volume. So that's when this oscillator line turns from the green yep. to the dark blue. We're seeing heavy volume to the downside, light volume on up days. Uh, that to me just spells uh, more danger for Tesla ahead. Boo. All right. So let's uh, have a question here from the our, our own chat here. Uh, Namita is asking, do you have go, no go for TD Ameritrade? Oh, great question. Uh, not yet. Uh, we're talking to the folks over there and getting that onto Thinkorswim uh, for all of our users on TD. Uh, but for right now, TradingView, Metastock, NinjaTrader, Wealth Charts. Uh, it's coming out on Optima. It's in Chart IQ. Hey. Uh, we've got TrendSpider, lots of others. And uh, hopefully it'll be on money.net pretty soon too. Yeah, we're de most definitely we'll be using Chart IQ. Um, all right, Tyler Wood, man, CMT Association and Go No Go, man, you are a wealth of knowledge. I'm glad to call you a friend. Listen, Absolutely. Tyler, we'll see you right back here next week, man. Thanks so much, Big Beat. You be well.